podcast. Digitized live from the Act Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the What's in Your Head podcast with your hosts Gordon and Don Abernathy. What's going on, Ocean 5? We're back again with another Saturday night entertainment value, which is worth about $3.38. But hey, it's all the money we have to bring to you. But hopefully, you guys can all is well on a Saturday night. You know, COVID-19 is still in the air. Actually, it's not in the air. Some people are and they're breathing all over you. But uh, we're, we're making do. Down here, so all four people are tired of it. I was out today, and uh, the mask count is down. The traffic is up. And we're all still alive and kicking. As always, joining us live from Las Vegas, Nevada, is Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. Uh, doing all right. Had a good week. Um, getting good grades. Your future's so bright. You, you got to wear shades. It's as bright as it can be in this time, you know. So, uh, you know, things are going well. Uh, God, I don't know. It's just, it's still weird. It's really weird for our town. And we're like Orlando, right? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, how, how's everybody there? We got a guest tonight. Yes, yes join us. I don't know why I say live. live. Join us dead, dead from North Fort Myers. Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us from North Fort Myers. Uh, she has appeared many a times on the Stan and Haynes show under the moniker Shark Lover or Shark Girl. Which one was it original? We were I think shark... it was Shark Lover. And then, and then it kind of segued into Shark Girl. And then, then she's been on the uh, What's the Skull of a podcast because she's an underwater photographer and diver. She actually went diving down in the Pacific around old battlefields and metal areas. And we talked about that at great length. Very cool. But, but sadly, she's, she's on tonight. tonight. As a public what? service Sadly, announcement. she's on tonight. What's wrong with you? Sadly, <laughs> she's on tonight for a public service announcement to you lonely, desperate social media men <laughs> that in 2020, in the time of hashtag me too, you still find it appropriate as a formal way to introduce yourself to a random stranger unsolicited, with no formal relationship, communication, or even an introduction, to send the random dick pic. And so, we want to discuss what it's like to be a female on social media. And I can just assume now, before we can get into this, that if you have a daughter and she's on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, anywhere else, hopefully maybe these guys wait until they're of legal age, but I'm sure... Sadly, that they've gotten a few in their, their inbox. And this came about because last week, actually the week before, because happy anniversary to you and your husband. Oh, thanks. What, yeah, happy thank anniversary. You. What's uh, What year is it now for you guys? Uh, Six years married, but we were together for like seven years or something before we got married. And so last week you posted a just a frustrated topic on your Facebook page saying, Hey, I'm married. My husband's sexy. I don't need to see your random crotch shots coming to my inbox. I don't even know you. And in the words of Carrie, I told her what was going on. She said, that still happens. <laughs> and sadly, yes, it does. So the floor is yours. I know you're frustrated. You're more than willing and wanting to talk to people about this. What do you got to say to the random weirdos on the goddamn internet? Yes. First of all, if you're trying to get with any female, like... It, it, respect is a huge deal. Yes, Women do not want to go to the, especially when they're at the gym. That's the worst. Like you're there, you're, you're disgusting. You're, especially the girls like me who are dressed in an extra large t-shirt and, you know, pants, not even yoga pants, just regular pants. And then they got some dude that's creeping around, like staring at them the whole time. Girls do not like this. Like just get it into your head. Now the gym is not, if you're looking for love, that is not the right place to go. Looking for like, love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. <laughs> and, say, and the thing is, is the majority of the people at the gym are so goddamn self-conscious, unless they're there, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week. That right. Even the ones who are single and attractive don't want you staring at them because they're too busy being concerned. Guys and girls alike. Everybody's in there concerned at how dumb they may look. To other people, which is the good news, because if everybody's concerned about how dumb they look, they're not focusing on other people laughing about how dumb they look because they're worried about themselves. So no one's really paying attention to what's going on except for the skeevy perv who uh, who's looking at your ass when you're you're bent over. The only time well, that anything grabs my attention, we have this one lady who quite literally does a full dance routine on the treadmill. 
That'll That's play. the only time. <laughs> and it, it's inc- I, I want to sneak a shot. I'm just, I can't. I'll be that guy then. But yeah, I mean, it's a full on deal. It, it's funny. No, what bothers me, what bothers me at the gym, and this would be a good question because you go to the gym and I wonder if this happens for the women. Um, Paul Harper saying we got a lot of echo. I'll try to sort that out. But anyhow, um, it's the old guys. These old guys who feel that it's appropriate to walk through the locker room, balls ass naked. Not even a towel. And then they stand in front of the seven foot wide mirror doing whatever in the mirror with one leg kicked up on the countertop airing out the boys. It's like, no one wants to see that. Go home. Yeah, no, usually for women, we get the mama bug bushka types that have, like, the giant boobs, stomach, everything, and they are just butt naked, roaming around, like, they don't give a crap. But, you know, you ever notice how the girls that are very scantily clad at the gym... Um, who are looking for attention, they're the ones that the dudes don't really mess with that much, the real creepers. It's always the girls who just want to be left alone. You know, like me, those are the people that always get messed with the most. You know, it's like a challenge. Do you think maybe those guys are intimidated by the women who seem confident? Exactly what I was thinking. Whereas they're thinking, oh, look at this timid little bunny. She don't know how to use the machine. I can go over there and show her the ways of the gym. Whereas the chick who's over there doing squats and, like, does... uh, crossfit on the weekend he's just like nope she'll kill me you know i don't really think it's about that i think that dudes are the girls that are you know loud and proud and flaunting it i just think that there's a lot of guys that just really aren't into that you know they want a nice girl but you know creepers they it's like some weird fantasy or something they just don't know how to uh how to show respect but i will say there's a really good friend of mine um she was on tinder for a long time And uh, she had some guy that, and she's a really nice girl, dresses well, you know, respects herself. She had some some dude contact her and say he would pay her a thousand dollars if she would poop on his chest. You know, like this is the kind of women have to deal with. (laughs) See, luckily, there's a substance on earth, and somebody has a fetish about it. See, luckily, I've been in a relationship for so long that Carrie and I met on MySpace. Oh, that's so cute. Let that sink in. And so we <laughs> haven't had to experience the wonderful worlds of the Tinder, the this, that, the other thing, and all that nonsense. And I don't know, it's got to be crazy for, you know, I should talk to my daughter. Well, no, she's been in a long-term relationship, too. I was going to say, I should talk to my daughter about being 20 and dating in the modern days with social media, you know, because Gordon and I were younger. We'd go out to the bars and this, that, and the other thing. But, and uh, I tell you what, I actually met Katina online. This was pre-Tinder. And, uh, Pretender. I see what you did there. You're clever. <laughs> and uh, That's the ask, app where people what? post pictures of like themselves in like, a life that they don't live at all. This is the Pretender oh, app. A... They're like yeah. working at a gas station, living in a studio apartment, but they post pictures of them standing in front of Bentleys and going on yachts. It's the Pretender app. <laughs> the Pretender <laughs> app. That's fantastic. But yeah, that's how we met. And, and at first, everybody, because this is kind of early into that whole online thing, um, People would ask, they're like, well, weren't, you know, weren't you afraid who you meet? I'm like, well, you go to a bar, what are you going to meet? You know, probably an alcoholic, number one. It's just, it's a risk you take everywhere. And it worked out well for us. So, but uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine the time of, you know, Tinder and all, all the online dating apps now. I think it would be. It's insane. crazy. Crazy yeah. dangerous, too. Do you think these My dudes friend- are so desensitized by it? That when you reply back with like a go fuck yourself or what the fuck you doing, I'm married, and this, that, and the other thing, they're just like, that's part of the game. They just don't I care. I think they watch too much porn. I think it's a porn addiction. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Oh, you're married. Think- okay, we'll do a cuckold scene. <laughs> you know? I, I think it's really, I think it's it's too much. And too much of anything, you know? I'm not anti-porn. I think everything is in moderation throughout life. And unfortunately, I think that's what people do. I hear that, yeah. Uh, Younger generations less apt to have sex because you know they could just pull up the uh, the phone. You know what we need? And, I just uh, thought of, go from there. Yeah. The social media uh, apps they need a digital beer because these dudes have never experienced having a drink thrown in their face. So yeah. if they can create a way where it'll put an icon <laughs> in their timeline on their photos or something that shows that they've been harassing people and they've got a digital drink in their just face. a sudsy beer pouring down their screen. And someone goes on their profile and they're, yeah, their, their screen just has like this water droplets all over it or something like, yep, 
And we're going to Steve again. Got another drink thrown in his face. <laughs> because I, I, mean, just Steve. I just frankly don't know what's going through these dudes' heads. Like, just go up and have a normal conversation. You know, you don't have to sneak around the building and, like, you know, send 30 messages to somebody, you know, creeping around. Like, it's, it's really not that hard. I think it, the respect thing is huge. Like, treat your treat this woman like you would want to be treated. It's like, you don't want a gold digger using you just like a woman doesn't want to be used or looked at as just an object. You and know? let's be honest. Um, the male body and genitalia for the most part, <laughs> even if you're a straight woman, it's not the most attractive thing on the planet. So open yeah. up your timeline and just get a close up of some guys twigging berries. I just, you're just you know what? Like, it's summertime that there's a lot of heat produced down there you know like we don't want to look at that you know what's what i'm thinking about is like my god what kind of diseases are existing the bacteria you know like just you're looking at this the, yeah, the wrong way already. though you have a social experiment you are on the front lines you and the other ladies who get these all the time you're on the front lines of the sub waste region trends as far as manscaping goes <laughs> you know okay out of all these picks i'm getting 40 percent on manscape half of them don't and... <laughs> nice i don't know it's just so fucking gross it's, it's just so disgusting. weird i mean just try like sending a message with you know ho like hello how are you today what are some of the things that you're interested in? Oh, I'm interested in these things too. Like simple conversation. Like how would you talk to your mom? You know, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mom, I need pizza rolls. I, I'm in the middle of a cop. I'm playing Overwatch. I, I'm I trying to get platinum. I need yeah. pizza rolls. And I got to <laughs> send out at least three dick pics today. So if you could help me out, mom. <laughs> yes. Yes. I... I got your social security check. I put it in the bank. Yes. <laughs> my Medicare check for my bad back will be here tomorrow. I'll pay the rent then. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. I got the seven pounds of salt yesterday. I put it. I can't help it if the water smells. Mom, I got a bad back. I only bought one bag of salt. God. This sucks. I need my own place. Place with sea water. Just... I ain't gonna buy seven pounds of salt every month. Oh. Excuse my political incorrectness. Like, young guys, especially, they're just retarded. I mean, <laughs> how else can you explain it? They just, they don't think. You know, they, I think it's been proven that the, the male brain doesn't make its final connections to the mid to late 20s. And then even after that, I'm sure, unfortunately, it's probably uh you know lost your power by him forcing this upon you oh this is just a, this is just the it's digital horrible. extreme version of the no game when i moved to california in 01 i lived in long beach didn't know anybody there and i'd go to the bar i sat there for the longest time never met anybody but i would sit there and social watch and i'd see like the different techniques that dudes have and the mm -hmm. one that i always thought thought was the funniest you see like three or four single dudes going out to the bar to get chicks man get chicks and they would see Talking like mad crap all the way there too. Well, they right? would see like one or two girls that they're interested in, but there's four of them, and so they'd mm -hmm. gather around them like a litter of puppies trying to get the one <laughs> dog bowl. It's like holy shit, dude! What do you? So what? The girls gonna have to choose between the five of you? Just the stuff people would do. I was is so fucking funny. I mean, is there like a blog out there that says, you know, treat treat women like like she's in heat? You know, gather round, wait for the eggs to disperse from her body. <laughs> like, it, it, seriously, is there? No, and that's the problem. They're not only, a, I, don't, I don't even know. I wish I had a, a psychiatrist we could get on here to talk about this, but it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, you know, it scares me because, like I said, I got a 20, 21-year-old daughter. I'm sure she gets one. And then I got a 12-year-old daughter. Hopefully the this oh, trend yeah. will die out in a uh, good five years. But it's just. Yeah. Dick pics galore. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, I'm not like a feminist, you know, I'm not right. anti-man. But, you know, women have definitely allowed this crap to happen by saying, you know, don't you open the door for me. Like, you know, I do what I want. I'm an independent woman. And, you know, you know I, I have chivalry. Yeah, you know? let's, let's stop it right there because I 
God, I would. I was one or two lady girls I dated when I was in high school, and I I tried opening the door, and man, did I get a rash of shit. You got a rash? Yeah. What kind of rash was it? Did rash they give you cream? <laughs> it was a shit rash, and it was just like you know, and it's exactly it. You know, I don't need you to hold my door for me type situation. I'm like, I'm just trying to be nice. You know, I'm trying to be. <laughs> How much of this can we pin on social media? Uh, on the on the um... crotch on the way through the door that you didn't want me to hold for you. <laughs> How much of this can we blame on the social media apps themselves? Let me give you an example. Oh, yeah. When I worked in yeah. radio, they would pay these consultants to come in and tell you how to best utilize the latest Facebook and um, software because they've changed the algorithm all the time. And they were saying that if you post a, a picture on your station page or your public profile page, if you post a post that is more than I think at the time it was like 37% text with no photo, it would not get shared. So if you had 10,000 people following your, your station or your public profile page and you just put a um, post that was all text, only people would see are like the people who like comment on all your shit. They wouldn't share it because they want photos. But here, now here's what I'm getting to. And so you think, well, these people would just write a bunch of shit, screen capture it, turn it into a photo and post it. They actually have software that knows if your photo you post is consistent more than 43% text. They won't share it okay. because they see it as advertisement. They don't want you making free money. They want you to pay them the five dollars to share that post. So, like, if you made, if you posted a photo oh. like at computers twenty dollars off for all digital four ten listeners, just call and you do it as a screenshot. They won't share it. Now, if it's a picture of a computer and some stuff and like just has your logo and your phone number, then they will share it. So my point is, if they have software that is so in depth that one, they can do facial recognition whenever you post a photo, it automatically tags people. And they know that your photo is whether how much of that photo is made up from text. Can't they have a software that recognizes dick pics and just not show them in your inbox? <laughs> no, that'll never happen. Oh, you know what they, they can call it? Of, of Facebook. This, this shit writes itself. itself. They, they can, can call it the cock block, block app. app. There you go. <laughs> you just log into Facebook, get a privacy and security, and enable cock blocking. You better get copyright on that shit. Boom! Yeah. There you go. You know, and, and I, so I, you know, as you know, I, I was in construction for a long time, still am in the industry and, and I may have heard this somewhere else, but that's exactly what goddamn social media is between Twitter and, and Facebook. And that is, it's basically the digital equivalent of a Porta John wall. <laughs> I swear to God it is. Yeah. If, if you look at the same type of humor, you got the same messages Minus the dick pics now, it's like so-and-so likes to suck. You know, it just all the, the random shit. I'm just like, yeah, humans are shit bags all the way back to probably before we walked out of Africa. <laughs> you well, know? Yeah, and I mean, the, the problem is, is like on Instagram, you know, if you're a girl and all you have are butt pictures, I mean, you know, you can make money from that. Oh, absolutely. Shit. That's the problem. <laughs> I've often <laughs> said if I was a blonde chick with big tits, I'd have three times the followers that I do. Easily. You say that. You say that. Did, did you know that you could actually sell your socks on eBay and get paid like two hundred dollars? Let me just say, uh, oh, I, I didn't know, know about the sock thing, thing but when I lived in Ohio before I left, I lived in a uh, two-bedroom townhouse, and uh, next door, the couple lived next door. The wife was a phone sex operator, and she would make oh she would make money on the side going down to Meyer buying panties and then like not wearing them but like doing things to them to make it give the aroma that possibly she did wear them and they would sell them to these creeps who call the phone sex line so the fact honey that don't selling, empty the litter box yet the fact I need that, it the fact that they're selling socks oh on ebay that surprised me and by the way japan they have like panty vending machines and weird shit like that they're super crazy over there well i have well, them and the germans i mean you know i have a, a I have a male friend who tried to talk me into doing the sock thing. And I was like, you know, hell no, I'm not going to do that. I know what people are doing to the socks. It's disgusting. So he said, well, if I, uh, if I sell a pair and make good money, will you do it? And I said, no, but you can go ahead. So well, what's involved? Because if it's just eBay, all you gotta do is create a profile, get a picture of a chick off of Google and a dude can just go buy socks and sell them. I mean, no, no, no. The whole, the whole point is, is they want to see your uh, feet and your legs in the socks. I gotcha. So, he sold a pair to some guy and got a message. He sold them for like $20 and the message was like, hello, I am very much enjoying your socks. Can you please sell them 
to me next time without washing them. Uh, and I said, no, this is never happening. So, <laughs> I don't care. There's so much creepy shit out there. It's insane. And it just gets worse, I think. I mean, just the town I live in enough. You, you <laughs> see it. You, you see it everywhere. I'm, I'm telling you, they, they should take me up on the idea, idea of the cock walk app. Well, Cape Coral, didn't Cape Coral have the highest amount of, of uh, registered sex offenders in the country for a long time? And it wouldn't surprise me. I know that, remember back when they were going to catch a predator, they were filming over in Fort Myers, like on season one? <laughs> and dudes were driving yeah. down from, like, Alabama and Georgia? Oh, my God. I was yeah. just coming to bring her pizza on lemonade. You know the funny, funny thing is about that perverted justice website? What's that? When, when I, I lived in California, California, I worked for a web host. Unfortunately, they just sold their company and that's a different name. But at the time, it was called Lunar Pages Web Hosting. And we, before the TV show came out, we, when I say hosted, basically we rented out server space. We didn't run the website, but whoever was running Perverted Justice was hosting it on our website. And Lunar Pages' policy is, is you can post anything on your website as long as it does not break California law. So if you want to sell little dirty women's socks, have at it. Stop breaking any laws. We huh. would constantly. Uh, it seems like that would be God of California. It seems like their laws have laws. Well, here's yeah. the thing: we constantly, we we finally had to ask politely ask them to find a new host because it got to the point where our tech support in our office, we were spending so much time deflecting um, threats from lawyers of these perverts. We demand that you take their picture off the home. It's like, dude, we don't run the website. It's just on our server. So that would be like the cis letters. Right? Yeah, that would be like us owning the building that they're running their office out of and post, you know, hanging these pictures in the windows. We have no control of that. They're not breaking any laws. But it just got so inundated and just so overwhelming that we just couldn't spend the manpower and the time screening all these phone calls and doing all this crap. That uh, and you know, you definitely sorry, weren't making you guys, money off of you guys money. need a. You guys need your own server and your own server farm somewhere, not on a shared server with, you know, a thousand other websites. Yeah, exactly. That's eh, it's not surprising. So, okay. Okay. <clears throat> What's that? So, so basically, basically, I think we can all attest to that if you're a woman and you're online at some point, your inbox is just going to get full of crap you really don't want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is, like, I'm a really private person. Like, I... You know, like I said, I really just want to be left alone. I'm married. I'm very happy. Like, you know, there's plenty mm. of lonely women out there. Like, you know, if it says married, like, just go away. <laughs> if it says in a relationship, you know. Move on. Nothing to see here. Oh, married. Yeah. Yeah. Get, well, get on now. Get. You're more welcome to, just, to continue with us through the rest of the show. If for some reason you need to bounce, just hit the uh, leave party and Gordon and I will continue on. But we're going to change the subject a little bit. But it's kind of the same because we're talking about degenerates and internet. I was watching, uh, I'm getting old, so I was watching TV news last night. TV and, news? And the anchor was disgusted with this new, I don't want to say TikTok trend. It started out by a comedian, but then all these nitwits and dumb shit started going up. Ladies and gentlemen, in the middle of COVID-19 and social distancing and self-quarantining, the new TikTok challenge is the pee your pants challenge. That's right. You stand in front of your bathroom mirror fully clothed and proceed to urinate in your pants. So the people who are in TikTok, wow. mainly like kids, will become adults who will probably eventually send dick pics. If, if they're not doing it already. If they're not doing it already. Yes, that's true. But here's the thing. Okay. We're all from a generation who grew up watching Jackass and CKY and all these goofy videos. Mm -hmm. One comedian pissing his pants on TikTok may be funny. But where's the humor in other people doing it? Well, don't you remember what Adam Sandler said? He said, pee your pants is the coolest. Well, pee your pants is cool, then that must be Miles Davis. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, are you kidding me? That's, that's where, how bored we are for content, watching semi-adult people? Yeah. It's not like they're like it's, urinating on their roommates or doing something funny, you know, running up and pissing on while they're sleeping on the couch. They're just standing there pissing in their own pants. You just imagine people from the yeah. future digging through the archives. Oh, Jesus. And seeing in <laughs> 2020, we had a great pandemic. And then in the middle of that pandemic, the big one of the big fads was to piss your pants. I, I mean, at least they're past the Tide Pod phase, you know. Uh, well, we had the, the Tide Pod, we had the ice cream lickers, now we got the pants pissers. 
Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Are these people making money off of this? That's the thing that I don't understand. Like what, like what, what is the point? Is it just to get views? You know, yes, everything, I think it's, everything's good views. Happen. Exactly. It's huh. all the views. It's. I mean, in the '90s, it was about you know what's the most shocking thing you can say on television and radio that would that would get your attention and, and help make money eventually. And now it's gone to pissing in your pants. <laughs> I mean, we're living in idiocracy. Like, you know, I didn't see that movie. Was dead nuts. Is that movie on Netflix? Where, where can I find it? Is it on Amazon Prime? I've, I've never, never seen, seen it. it. No, I've never seen it. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Netflix has it, but you need to find it somewhere. President it is... Camacho. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary how much it parallels uh, modern society. And yeah, politics. yeah. <laughs> it, it really is, and it, it, the the more the years go by, the smaller that divide gets. Yeah, I mean, it's it's probably the greatest movie ever made. Like you know. Hands down. Well, well that's a Mike Judd flick. Yeah, right? I was say it's Mike Judd flick who did um, uh, Office Space. Yes. Did Jeez, he do uh, that too, right? Did, did he and, do? Um, what is it? Uh, on the Hill, what's it called? King of the Hill, King, yeah. King of the Hill, yeah. And also uh, Beavis and Butthead is, was his original one, wasn't it? Correct. He was the original huh. originator of Beavis and Butthead, which I... I uh, actually created a sound effect tonight for another topic we're going to get to here shortly, but I forget where I put it. Um, while we're on the topic of degenerate, degenerate and crazy, crazy people, people um, were you guys ever aware of how much, how widespread the addiction to gambling is in this world prior to COVID-19? No, well, not really. Yeah, it's funny. Where I really learned it was when I was up in Big Sky. Um a lot of people in the early 2000s were into the into poker, uh, and then moving to Vegas. Obviously, a lot of a lot of people on their their slot machines on their phones and and doing the the sports betting, you know, down at the books. You know, a ton of people. So it's it's bigger than you would ever believe. Oh, I, I believe, believe it now because, because that's, that's the whole point. point. Now, now that the sports, sports are shut, shut down, down, all these book you know, we're out in your neck, all these book, book takers, they are betting on some of the craziest crap just to have something to get their fix on. <laughs> like, what kind of stuff are they, well, um, like? Um, sadly, sadly, I'm really horrible at uh, show prep, so I'm actually, actually trying to find a list of crap that we're betting on. But it's anything from stuff that happens on TV shows to uh, these virtual video games. Uh, I'm sure they're betting on anything. They're, they're literally betting on the weather. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they bet, bet on, on the weather, weather uh, you know, know tweets. Um, I'm trying to find a topic here. here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, COVID Amongst the sports shutdown, some uh, bettors are looking for offbeat wages. COVID-19 statistics, um, all bettors, uh, let's see, weather, elections, current events, the NFL draft, sports simulators, horse racing, reality TV, esports, darts, uh, competitive eating, table tennis, and in foreign team, team sports. sports. I, mean, I mean, they're basically, basically anything that has kind of a, a win-lose or a rating system or just something, something they can bet on, they're just taking money on because they got to get their fix. It, does anybody do any kind of, like, turtle racing on YouTube that you can bet on or, or something like that? Snail <laughs> you're, races? You're overlooking it. Let's, Let's go to Alva. The, you, right, right there. We'll, we'll get, get some film equipment, equipment and, and maybe we'll, we'll start streaming live and people start taking bets on the Alva armadillo races. races. What? There you go. <laughs> you, you never <laughs> like the Lee County Fair, Fair or anything and see where they, they have like the armadillo races and stuff? Oh my god. No, I had I I did not know that. <laughs> well, if it can be raced, it will be bet on. <laughs> oh, I'm god. trying to think what else you could race that would be really really fascinating for Florida. I mean, could you race gators? Is that possible? I, I, I think, think they have a short a short uh, um, um distance. distance. I don't, I don't think, think they, they have a lot of um Length to them. Slots. How about all those iguanas you guys have currently? There you they're, go. They're all monitors. The we got those. Speaking I've of been Florida. There will be 10 people killed by falling iguanas this year. You want to take me up on that? Dude, I woke up today. And I don't know. I didn't get the memo, but apparently today is the beginning of the love bug season because those goddamn bastards are all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. For those who don't know what a love bug is, it's basically a lightning bug without lightning. 
and then they connect to a partner and they just hover around and smack in your car. Well, weren't they developed by University of Florida to try and... Did you ever hear about that? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think that, yes. I think they were made in the lab to offset either a plant or something. Uh, hold on. Uh, Advent. It, no, it was uh, it was for mosquitoes because there's a there's a love bug in Australia that eats mosquitoes. That would so, make sense. Yeah, they, they thought that they could develop it here where it would do the same thing, but instead it just does nothing but, you know, screws so, its partner all day and ruins your paint. So It's a small thing called the law of unintended consequence. <laughs> yep. And it is everywhere. It's well, and insane. now they're doing it again. They're going to release a beetle that will take care of your... Um, what is it potato vine and uh i'm sure it's gonna do something like it'll have opposable thumbs and be able to light your house on fire there's there's gonna be some awful thing that's gonna come from that yeah stop messing with shit ain't Ain't that the truth truth. let's see the the myth myth claims love bugs were genetically engineered by uf uh and a word i can't pronounce and tom whatever Attempting to create species to uh, uh, of sterilized female insects that would mate with male mosquitoes, preventing them from creating offspring. The, uh, thought the process, the scientists mistakenly created low bugs would somehow escape from the wild. It's basically nonsense, but that's the uh, that is the rumor and the circumstance. Oops. Gordon, every week you start a new bit, which is uh, what's the dumbest thing you've seen all week? And um, I, I got, got a good, good one, one, but do you have a good one? I, I do not, unless I did it. Oh, um, man. I don't have any this week. What, what about you, Kate? What's the dumbest thing you've seen all week? Oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is this isn't really funny, but just all the censorship that's been going on. Uh, you know, people are posting videos with differing opinions on COVID nineteen, and it's like two minutes later. It's you know erased from the internet. That, Have you seen that video, the documentary? Oh my Every God. time somebody sends me a video, it gets deleted. It's, it's like I lot, can't watch it in time. It's, it's up on YouTube. It won't come, come down. down. It's, it's got, got some interesting things in it, and it points out some good stuff. But if anybody can tell you, um, just about all documentaries are created to present a side of an opinion or argument. Correct. And so obviously, if you want to do a documentary presenting what you call facts that so-and-so did certain things, then that's the way, that's the impression people want to get when they walk away from watching your movie. Whether it's the truth or not remains to be seen, and obviously if you want to make a documentary saying so-and-so didn't do this sort of thing, it all depends on the um, quality and effort of the director and the uh, writer and the producer of the documentary of how well, how believable that message comes off. Um, you know, I will say this about that, I think it's called Plandemic or some shit, um, it, it just, just kind of popped up. Now, now if they, they just produced that thing this during the COVID-19, uh, good, good job on you. It's well-produced. It's not like some YouTube video. video. It's, it's a well-produced documentary, and it's done, you know, in, a, in the style of a professional documentary. And they've got the thing out quick. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe happenstance this was something they were working on prior to this, and then obviously the COVID-19 provided a lot of great content to go under the argument. I'm sure maybe the documentary went to a completely different direction than where it started because the whole thing kind of started about how basically the woman in the documentary was part of the team that found the way to um, treat HIV. Obviously, there's no cure for it, but there's a treatment that's why Magic Johnson and all of them are still alive, and that's why you, you, you're not hearing on the news about you know the big AIDS epidemic and the big death. And according to her in this documentary, her and one of the other guys on the team was going to publish this in a medical journal so that they could get the, the word out. Mm-hmm. And allegedly, according to her, Fauci and uh, another buddy got pissed because they want to put a patent on the treatment so they can make a shit ton of money. Wow. And basically, according to her, allegedly somehow snuck um, intellectual properties from the um, lab where they do all this work in her house and then had the cops raid find it, which she claims she didn't take home, and then basically held her in jail for like five days with no charges, and then put a gag order on her, threatened arrest her. This is all important to her. Now, the interesting thing about that is, if it is true, they're kind of saying this thing, well, you know, he kind of is responsible for the huge death from AIDS in South Africa. 
because of the amount of time it took to get the information out there. And then it kind of, basically what they're trying to do is build a, a character assassination of Fauci and say, you know, he did all this stuff and now um, he's in charge of the COVID-19 stuff and all of a sudden now hydroxychloroquine is nowhere to be found except for my house, we got a whole bunch of it. And they also talk about how when autism, the spectrum of autism really picked up, um, a lot of the doctors who were researching autism found an old medicine in the list of like most valuable medicines, whatever, that would help. Obviously, you can't reverse autism, but kind of help stabilize the side effects and, you know, the behavior stuff. And it kind of went off. It's nowhere to be found now because there's no patent on it. And they're basically saying, why is hydroxychloroquine nowhere to be found? Why, you know... Once, Once again, that's not my words, it's all in there. there. The, the question, question is, is isn't it interesting that this medicine that's been around fighting malaria for 70 years, it costs five cents a unit. No one wants, no, there's a big push not to use it because possibly there may be a more expensive medicine to come along that people have patents on. Right. And, and then, then they're pointing out how... All these side effects, right? But the medicine's been on, on the market for how many years? Yeah, yeah. something years. Well, well they, they, they use, use it to um, help fight lupus. lupus. That's, That's why we have it in house. Carrie has, has his lupus, lupus medication because lupus, lupus is an autoimmune deficiency disease, and, and so she rarely takes this hydroxychloroquine. Actually, she, she quit taking it. That's why I have so much of it. But you know, for a while she stopped taking. It, but there's still right scripts for it. But, but no, it's just crazy. And, they're, and I don't know. They're just kind of talking about. And they're also talking about how a majority of the patents on medications and treatments are actually held by universities. Because mm. they just, they're, they put, they pay the money for all the equipment for the uh, researchers to find the stuff. And then when they find it, kind of like, what, you know, well, hey, yes, it was your brain, but you used our equipment, our research facility, and all of our, um, you know, access. So we own it. It's not your intellectual property. We do. And so it's, yes, there's part of it about Fauci and COVID-19, but it's only 25 minutes. There's a lot about just basically the dark sides of how the medication, why it's so expensive and why it takes long to get out there because, you know, the cheaper stuff that's widely available gets stamped down so that allegedly money hungry people can put out these super expensive treatments. Oh, it's yeah, true. With, that, yeah. You know, with everything, they've got to do so much testing over so long of a time mm -hmm. and then it's going to be peer reviewed yep. over and over and over again. And, and that's what's interesting. I mean, it, it seems like the, the country's even more divided now with COVID going on. And um, and one of the things is, I'm like, I'm not against the science. I think science makes sense. But unfortunately, the science takes a long time. And the way we're going to see it in two years is going to be completely different than now because the time will have passed and all the peer reviews will get in there and, and you know, cross-check and everything else. So, well, and that's, that's the interesting, interesting thing about what's going on with the COVID stuff is it kind of shows, because I've been reading, you know, I'll read little things here and there throughout the years, like in Reader's Digest and that, where doctors and researchers are complaining about how they come up with a medicine that they tested and they've done all the research and it just sits on a shelf waiting to get reviewed by the FDA and talk about how slow that process is. And perfect example, when this whole thing went down, the president said, hey, FDA, let's start fast-tracking shit. All of a sudden, things are getting pushed out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a, a great move on his part, you know? It's like, if the person is going to die anyway, might as well try an experimental drug and see mm -hmm. what happens, you know? And um, I don't know. I think it's... I'm an independent. Like, I try to listen to both sides. I think it's interesting. People are... Yeah, it's like people are one extreme or the other. It's like, you know, they spend so much time hating on a president whether it's trump or obama they hate a person they've never even met you know and the answers are usually somewhere in the middle yeah yeah and well, there's a lot of stuff we don't know you know well isn't that, isn't that an interesting human condition because i was actually thinking about that the other day when i saw this little thing pop up I'm like oh here we go some nutball and my first instinct is i'm not gonna watch it because i want to you know oh here they're gonna try to talk about fauci and you know all this horrible stuff and my first instinct is, okay, this, this documentary is going to have an opinion and a view that's different than mine, so I'll be goddamn if I'm going to watch it. But I started watching it, and I'm like, hey, that kind of makes sense. And so when it was over, I didn't buy into what they were selling completely, but it was definitely thought-provoking, and it made me think, and I didn't come off, you know, as reluctant as when I first watched it. And I think it's interesting how that happens, like, 
and I first realized this human condition like four or five years ago. I listened to a podcast where the podcaster was going to interview. Um, oh, what the fuck's his name from Politically Incorrect? Bill Maher. Yes. Coming up next on the show is Bill Maher. I said, I'm not going to listen to this fucking blowhard. And I listened to it. I thoroughly enjoyed the interview. And I thought, wow, the guy's, he's, you know, I don't get along with him politically, but he's not this horrible fucker I thought he was, you know, when I told myself I wasn't going to listen to this interview. And I think that's what we all need to do. If, if you find yourself, now obviously if it's straight up, you know, horrible Nazi propaganda or some shit, don't waste your time. But, you know, I think maybe if your first instinct is to buck away from it, go ahead and do it. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I, I do lean a little more conservative. I, I'm kind of more in the middle, actually, you know. Uh, but one of the, the only places I actually listen to news is NPR. You know, I, I listen to the other side. I'll listen to the the little more the the emotional end of it or, or, or whatever, just to, to see where everybody's at, you know, and to make my own decision. The worst thing you can do is just listen and surround people with the same opinions you have. Well, well that's, that's where the word echo chamber, chamber comes, comes from. from. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's like people are just, uh, they're fearful of, yeah, of the challenge, of being standing up to the challenge of, yeah, having their opinions rocked and, you know, it's well, like, it's, that's how you grow as a person, you know. I think it's more simple basic than that. What's the one thing everybody hates to do? Admit when you're wrong. Oh. No, oh, I, I yeah. do it all day long. And so when you put yourself in a position where you're going to watch a documentary or listen to an interview or watch a news story about something that on its face value you think is a completely opposite view of what you believe in, your natural instinct is to kind of go into fight mode because you're in your subconscious, you're aware that, hey, I might be proven wrong on something. Especially if people, if it's something that somebody has built their life around mm -hmm. seeing it this one way and just the uncomfortableness and the feeling of, oh, fuck, I was wrong, <laughs> you know, that people yeah. don't want to admit to or obviously they won't. They'll just pivot and say, hey, uh, that's just propaganda. Don't believe that. That, that makes no sense. And well, so, and, and so we kind of get... did you listen to what was said. And we, we kind of got to this a little bit in the past. It's like, how do you grow and gain wisdom? If you want to, one, limit your experiences in life. I mean, I think, and Kay can attest to this, how she's been all over the goddamn world. She's been down to the Pacific, down to Peleliu and Taro, where they fought World War Two. been diving. Uh, one of the best things you can do for your mind, your culture, and your self-esteem is to travel. Yeah. Experience anything, other cultures. It, it gives 100%. you such a, a huge appreciation for what we have here. And it also makes you realize, like, you know, you go to these other countries, people have, they have dirt floors, they have nothing, like, they don't have a quarter of the stuff that we have here. And they're so nice, they're so happy, you know, they, they love one another, you know, they love when people come to visit, like, they're very giving people, they'll give you whatever they have. And you come here, and you know, people have got $50,000 cars, and they're screaming at each other at the Starbucks, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me. Well, I had a friend who kind of in the early, mid-2000s, he was kind of that way, you know, back when the whole, you know, our country sucks thing, we're doing all this bad shit, yada, 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 and, you know, he would kind of lean that way politically, and when your conversation was just kind of, you know, it was blah. Well, his father passed away, and he sold his business, and he went on like a six-month sabbatical around Asia, of all places, and basically hiked and drove, and he had like six months to realize Holy fuck, America's not that bad. Like, like Kate was saying, these people are sleeping No wonder on the floor. everybody's trying to come here. This guy, <laughs> you know, this guy over here makes his living off of cutting down bamboo and harvesting pigs and just, you know, yeah. travel. That's perspective, right? Yeah, I mean, and shit, let's not even talk about world travel. Let's talk about continental travel. If you're living in, oh, I don't know, Fort Myers, Florida your entire life and you've never been to you know, a small town in Kentucky or Tennessee or even Columbus, Ohio or middle of nowhere, you know, North, North Kenota, any of those places, you get tunnel vision. You don't, you, you think the whole world revolves around and works the way you do. And I said this before, you know what, one of the biggest problems the news media has is, themselves. 
Well, their cells, and they, they, li they literally live in a bubble. Now, I understand they do it for logistics of getting a hold of people, but they're either broadcasting out of New York or L.A. Why not put a sub-office in northern Wyoming? Why not put an office in Tennessee, Kansas? Send some of your top people there. Let them live the Kansas life. Let them live the Tennessee life. Let them live the Texas life. And, and then, then when they come, come on, they will. It'll, it'll be a more diverse conversation instead of having, you know, oh, here's five people on the panel. That was happening in Washington D.C. Here's six people. Two of them in New York. Two of them in California, and the rest live, you know, in Chicago. And so when you have all, yeah, where's the representative from Big Bone, Kentucky? Exactly. So you have all these people, with the exception of whenever they have a congressperson on, you have all these people who are basically living in the same town. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a podcast here. Gordon's on from Vegas. We get people in, you know, we try to spread it around and get the diversity. Whereas, you know, you just have three dudes who live on the same neighborhood, the same town, working the same job every day. It's going to get stagnant. And so I think if if they were to do that and spread it around, I think the media would get a little more diverse. So well, some of the best journalists... Oh, sorry, Gordon, go ahead. My thing is... I want, and, and I don't remember who said this, I think it was the, the uh, senator or the congressman with the eye patch, but I was listening to an interview with him, and he, he said something that we just don't hear enough of. Hey, if you're going to take one political party member or, or, or a member of a political party or the administration to task with all the difficult questions, you need to ask the same types of difficult questions to the other side. Because then it shows you're pandering. Oh, yeah, hey, we're going to slam this guy, but we're going to kiss this person's ass. Well, it needs that, to be the same. Just the facts. Ask the hard questions. Well, where that gets a little slippery is they actually made a law, and I forget the fuck what it was called, but it was actually in radio and TV where basically if you were going to have, like let's say it's election season, right, and we're going to interview the local candidate running for the public office, by law you were required to give the same amount of time on the air to their opponent or someone from the opposing audience, which, which is fine, but let's say Gord's running, for one, one party, Katie's running from the other party. I want to interview Gordon. He's, He's down for it, but Katie says, no, nah, I don't like your station, I don't like your views. Well, then I can't interview Gordon because she won't come on. Or no, yeah. her party It's the whole on. fair and balanced approach yeah. that they were to, uh, to get to in the early 2000s. And unfortunately, all news is biased, and, it, and there is biases to people doing the interviews. Sadly, can, can we truly call, call it news anymore? It's, it's, all, it's, 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 it's all opinions. Yeah. It's all entertainment, yeah. And that's what I was actually going to suggest when we uh, do our news here. We just more call it a uh, you know a little news and a lot of a lot of opinion. Real, Real quick, quick to answer, answer the question, let's circle back to the dumbest thing I've seen, seen all week. Um, last, last week, this um, dumbass. I was I, I, I do, do a lot, lot of veterinary clinics. clinics. Uh, they're they're a majority of my work, and um, I have what they they sent for maintenance program where I come out every six months, three months, whatever. To not only clean the software, but this is a veterinarian clinic. Get a lot of animals, get a lot of dangers. So we get through and physically back up fans and listen for bearings going out and try to replace parts before they die so they keep the machines up and running. I spent like four hours, no, it was like two and a half hours on a job up in Lehigh getting all our machines running. And then 11 o'clock at night, some fella who was picking up his girlfriend at Sweet Bay, I'm oh, sorry, Win Dixie. Drove through their lobby, ran over their laptop, their checking machine, and proceeded to drive his car into exam room number two. Oh my god. Dumbass. Now here's the thing. The sidewalk from the curb to the front door is about 20 feet. Plenty of room to stop. He told Lalal that he was waiting for his girlfriend when his foot slipped off of the brake and hit the gas pedal. You know, why the fuck were you in a park? I don't care if you're in drive. I, I've been, I'm 41 years old. I got my license at 17. Uh -huh. I pulled jet skis. Uh -huh. I've driven ambulances in parking lots. I've driven trucks, cars, four-wheelers. Yep. How many times in your life has your foot slipped off of the brake and hit the gas pedal? Hold on. Let me, let me think about it. Let me think about it. None. And if it did happen... Did you, did you have, have such force that the gas pedal went to the floor and you completely lost control of your car? Or did you say, oh, shit, and hit the brake? Actually, you know, 
I'm going to walk that statement back. I did have this happen once, and it was in a work truck, and it was because work trucks have a very slippery type floor mat. Yeah, so you wash them off. And then you, well, then they had that, and then they had a very slippery floor mat over top of it. So it was actually the floor mat that wasn't anchored that slipped up mm -hmm. and got me hung up, and I almost, you know, popped somebody on the strip. But uh, it was. I, I promptly got rid of that format. Like, this so you're saying you're sitting in the parking lot, and your girlfriend gets in the car, or you're waiting your girlfriend, and your foot slips, you press the gas pedal all the way down, but you couldn't regain control of your car before you ran over the curb, drove 20 feet. Now, on the news, they showed the video footage. called an emergency brake, just to let you know. On the news, they showed the video footage from the video camera that we installed here at computers. And that's right, computers have been providing that. IT for work for all Southwest Florida since 2004. If you need security cameras in your uh, building to protect some people going through your front door, you need two form authentication or online backup, give them a call at 239 283 They can re repair the fans in your high end gaming machine like we did for an OG5 member not too long ago. We can set you up with online backup to protect you against malware and ransomware. We can set you up with two form authentication to help secure your network. Give them a call at 239 283 But if you look at that camera that computer is installed, you can see that car is traveling probably about 35 40 miles an hour. Jeez. No, I'm, I'm just, just a web host. I'm just a podcast host and a computer guy. Mm -hmm. But if I had to, I'm sure the cops this guy's line. If I had to make an assumption based off what I've seen, if there was a girlfriend involved, I'm betting Romeo was probably fighting her. His yeah. testosterone got the best of him, and he thought, I'm going to peel off his tail out of here like goddamn Bo Duke and give her the what for, lost control of his car, and go through the fucking front of the goddamn clinic. So Dumb instead of ass. going out like Bo Duke, he went out like Homer Simpson. He's an asshole, sir. So, so that, and, and, and I, I, I became you didn't a, physically witness this, though. No, no I, I became aware of this when I got a phone call first thing in the morning. The office manager says, hey, how can I hook up the credit card swiper to the machine in the back we had in the emergency? Oh, and I said, so what kind of emergency do you have? She said, Google car veterinarian clinic Lehigh. And I'm up. <laughs> I said, okay, uh. Plug it into your computer, call Avmark, they need to configure that workstation to process credit cards. And I quickly got on Google and I saw the footage of the car traveling through the lobby. Now, here's the, the good thing if there is one. So, if you're standing at the desk at the counter, the window's here. So, the camera on the podcast would be where the window's at, right? There's a column here, there's a workstation for the laptop. Over here, you have the intake computer and a printer. On the other side of the column, one of the employees brought their gecko in and had its atrium sitting there. Is that the proper term for the uh, aquarium that a gecko lives in? Is it an atrium? Anyhow, Terraria. Terraria. The car actually went on this side of the column, thus saving the iguana and, and the other workstation. And luckily, if he would have rolled through the exam room too and into that hallway, he would have wiped out four more computers, and if he would have swerved to the right, went through exam room one, and then through that fallen wall, he would have wiped out their quarantine and then take out their server. So the fact that they only lost two computers out of 13, they got super lucky. But here's the worst part. Like three years ago, that entire lobby had just been rebuilt because the landlord had a uh, leak in the roof, and they had a mold issue. So just three years ago, all the drywall, all the walls had been torn out, replaced, repainted, and redone just to have this asshole drive through the lobby because I was waiting on my girlfriend and my foot slipped off the gas pedal. Dumbass. So that's the dumbest thing I've seen all week. Hmm. I guess the dumbest thing I've seen, I'm thinking about it now, it's probably something you see everywhere. People who are actually driving in their cars with their gloves and their masks. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I can understand... You just contaminate ev contaminated everything in that vehicle. I can understand if you work for Amazon, UPS, and you're literally getting out of your truck every five feet. Correct. But yes, the guy in the commercial... What about the guy riding his bike down the sidewalk? See that every morning on the way to work. And I'm just like... And I do... I, do, I see a lot of that uh, around here. And it does actually tend to run with a certain demographic. I was going to say, you're closer to California, and that's kind of the mandate out there, is if you go outside at all, you're supposed to wear a mask, because if this thing's airborne, like fucking pollen. Well, like, I went to Publix this week. I'm pregnant. And, Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Oh, Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, people might be nice to me. <laughs> so 
uh, I have a mask on. I have uh, my cart is like in the center of an aisle that's empty. This man comes through, gives me a dirty look, and then literally hits my cart out of the way and then keeps walking and is giving me dirty looks. And the whole time people are giving me dirty looks and I don't know if it's because I'm pregnant and I'm not supposed to be at the grocery store. I I'm not entirely sure about that. But I think it's the anti-mask people. There is a segment of the mm -hmm. population for some reason asking them to wear a mask or requiring them to wear a mask is, is at the offense of the highest order. Well, that's because you guys are cheap and I stand for self independence. I'm not no sheep. I ain't gonna follow the government. Sadly, I got my don't tread on me flag because I like this too and you assholes are taking it over and that pisses me off. And you all a bunch of sheep. I'm gonna stand for my right to live and die because I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees wearing a mask that don't do shit no how. So you guys keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna be over here shopping my knives and cooking my beans. Unless y'all assholes can suck my... Hey, how are you? Those guys, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, look... And this is coming from a guy with the Don't Tread on Me hat with the 13-star uh, fucking colonial flag, so... Uh, you know, hey, that, you guys are... That one too, huh? Well, it's just like during the Obama administration, um, you know, the, the quote-unquote Tea Party, they... A lot of, you know, well-meaning people, but they kind of took over the... Stick. They, they took over the Don't Tread on Me flag, and so if you have that flag, uh, they associate that racist. with you. And well, I had this conversation because we live here in Florida. And, you know, Do you? the Confederate flag, that's for hatred. That's for a heritage, not hate. And that's a battle flag. It wasn't actually the flag for, you know, that's for when we're fighting. Look, I get it. As a historian, I get the, the quality value of your Confederate flag and your, your desire to, to fly it. Battle but you need to have a long, hard conversation with the people during the 50s and the 60s who used it as a symbol for hate when they're marching with their redneck buddies yeah, they in the clan. co-opted it. In a Sadly, your flag somewhere. was taken over and used mm -hmm. for bad purposes, and now that's what it symbolizes, just like the Gadsden flag people associate to the point where, remember when people were, like, were getting like kicked out of their work for wearing Don't Tread On Me shirts? And guys, the flag shirts. I don't remember. That. Yeah, there was a few when stories. All this back in 08 during the Obama administration, there's stories like where guys would wear like the 1776 United shirts, like that I wear. That's what this hat is. And it would have like the, the Gadsden flag on it, the Don't Tread on Me, or the uh, Join or Die Snake, which was actually created by Benjamin Franklin, which, by the way, is public domain. And you can get your uh, Join or Die t shirt from the 410.com. We actually have our own version right now because that flag is in, I mean, that symbol is public domain because it was invented by Benjamin Franklin back in the day. But yeah, they would get sent home from work because um, every night on the news you had all these Tea Party protests, and so people who were pro Obama saw that flag the way a lot of people see the Confederate flag as a symbol of hatred and this, that, and the other thing because it was adopted by someone with a certain belief system, and people were actually getting sent home from work for refusing to change their shirts, if you know, for wearing a Gadsden flag on it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could even look at the color red as a symbol of hate because the bloods used it, right? Like, <laughs> no, oh, worse man. than that, worse than that, the bloods. Hell, that's that's welcome. The fact that uh, the uh, MAGA hat's red. Oh yeah. Uh, Do you yeah. think if Limp Biscuit was on tour, Fred Durst would no longer wear a red cap? Because that was his trademark <laughs> for the longest time. Actually, we know the answer for that. Have you seen that new car commercial? Uh. Uh. I don't, I don't know if it's the Amazon company, but there's a new car commercial. They're talking about selling a used car. Like, what do you do if you have a used car that has a CD player that's stuck playing Limp Biscuit and she's driving around town, her kids are like, oh, I've seen that, tearing her hair out and is playing all, 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 did it for the nookie. And then she pulls up to a crosswalk and Fred Durst is walking by with uh, grocery bags and he has a blue hat on instead of the red hat he's known for wow. because Trump has made red hats a symbol of hate. <laughs> we're so, we're so dumb. And then we just turn everything, instead of having having an actual discussion, it's just, you're racist, let's move on. Yeah, sadly, I will carry this conversation on forever, but we are running long, so let's go ahead and get to the news. The news. Joining us now from the Digital 410 West News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada, Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how are you doing tonight? 
I'm going all right. I don't know if it is the sign of the times and, you know, the lockdown. Fortunately, uh, Nevada's kind of soft opening is today. Um, so we've actually got a legit haircut appointment for next week. You know, lots of social distancing that and this and that. But uh, it seems like people may be feeling the stress because Thursday of last week, we've had two road rate incidences that end in death by gun violence. Uh, one was down near Gene, and this is, if anybody watched uh, one of my uh, review videos, half ass review videos on the tires, you'll see the OG5 logo with a little Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. This is right about that same spot this has happened. Wow. So Las Vegas Highway Patrol troopers were involved in a deadly shooting Thursday night near Interstate 15 in Gene. That's also where we can go get White Castles. Um, NHP Southern Command Public uh, Information Official uh, Travis Smaka said authorities were informed the possible road rate situation just before six involving a black F-150 pickup truck and a black Dodge Ram. Oh boy, it was a Ford versus Dodge showdown. Uh, the trooper said that this initial call came from a person inside the Ram truck saying the F-150 F-150 followed the person with, uh, with a, and was shown a gun. Basically, he was brandishing his gun. Dumbass. Two trucks eventually exited the highway, stopped at the parking lot of uh, the NHP substation in Gene, and uh, unfortunately, there was a shooting. And then this one was right by the Raiders Stadium. A man killed during a Las Vegas second road rage incident actually may have been self-defense. So a young man was killed. Check this out. This one's an interesting one. A young man was killed during a road rage incident around 8 p.m. Thursday near Russell Road and in Interstate 15. Police said that the incident happened at a red light. The man who was shot got out of his vehicle. He approached the other driver and then took out a gun and pointed it at the driver, not knowing that the driver pulled out a gun and shot that young man who was threatening him. That's insane. So he probably thought, I'm going to flex. I've got a gun. Evidently not realizing how many gun odors are in this town. Went up and uh, he ended up dead. What's interesting is the guy who shot the young man left the scene. He did come back, uh, got with Metro, said, "What this is what's up. He has not been arrested, and it has been declared self-defense. One thing that's nice, we got all these cameras at all the lights around here. They're not used for any ticketing, but all they got to do is go and check that out, and they'll see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking, uh, which is weird because the roads have been pretty light around here. So mm -hmm. I think the stress, you know, with the domestic violence going up, the suicide rates going up, and, and just the all-over pressure – of the, uh, the the job market and economy is getting to people. But, and this may be in bad taste, I do apologize ahead of time, Tom McDonald. Oh, you gotta give me a heads up. I gotta find that damn drop. I don't know how to put it. So, uh, the Tiger Queen has died. Oh. Uh, Roy Horn has passed away with the coronavirus this week. Uh, 75 years old at Mountain View Hospital in Northwest Las Vegas. Uh, Roy was a fighter his whole life, including during those final days, I gave my heart, heart felt appreciation to the team and doctors and nurses and staff at Mountain View Hospital who worked his, to her, um, who worked heroically against the uh, insidious via, uh, virus that ultimately took Roy's life, according to Siegfried. So, uh, <clears throat> Horn was, about, uh, obviously we know he's a half, half the entertainment duo of Sieg Siegfried and Roy. Uh, you know, about his tiger incident and uh, that that injured him. And then we're going to continue on with a, a trio of deaths, unfortunately. Former Bad Company singer Brian Howe, as everybody knows, especially down that way, has passed away in Florida. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, from CNN, Brian Howe, former frontman of the British rock group uh, Bad Company, died Tuesday at the age of 66. His friends and longtime manager Paul Easton told CNN he was found in his home suffering from cardiac arrest. While Howe was able to briefly speak to the MTs, he died in his home after they were unable to revive him, Easton said in the statement. Finding the appropriate words to express the pain in our hearts over losing my brother has been very difficult, Howe's sister Sandy said in a statement. Our family would like to thank you for your uh, compassion and the outpouring of love we're receiving. Born in Portsmouth, England, Howe got his career started singing for, on Ted Nugent's uh, Penetrator album. Years later, Howe was chosen to take over as the lead singer of Bad Company after the departure of singer Paul Rogers. 
The singer songwriter was the front man for Bad Company for eight years. Uh, quote, I feel we're all put in this role for a reason, Hal's son Michael said in a statement, the passion for our music of my father's, and I'm happy to say his legacy will live on. Hal also is survived by his daughter Victoria and Ella. Now, people down here, we are familiar with Brian Hal because, well, he lived down here forever and a day. Excuse him. Bad time to burp in this sad conversation. But if you're also a uh, listener to the radio station K Rock and particularly Stan Haney, they've had a relationship with him for years. Thus, during my five and a half years working for them, I have communicated with the man on multiple occasions, getting him on the show and talking to him about certain things. And about two and a half years ago, he had a stent in the hospital uh, for a heart condition. And what a lot of people don't know is yes, he rescues beagles and is a big time uh, compassionate animal lover, but he also rescued and um, took care of parrots. And I know during that time, I reached out to uh, his people to find out if uh, people were taking care of his parrots while he was in the hospital. Otherwise, I would drive down to Fort Myers Beach and help them out, but they had it all taken care of. And so he was a huge animal lover and went out of his way to um, take care of beagles, which I have, and parrots. And um, it's uh, definitely a sad loss for the uh, town of Florida. He did a lot of uh, stuff down here and provided entertainment for years. It's so funny. I remember the first time I went down to K Rock, a different show was on. It wasn't Stan, well, Stan Haney was on, but it was another show that I was a part of briefly. And uh, it was my first introduction to the radio, really. And Brian Howe's album came on, and the, and the host of this nighttime show was slamming it, and they were fighting on the air, this and that. And I drove down there, and I got in the studio, and then went to commercial break. And Brian Howe was on the phone, and then went to commercial break after just having a screaming match about how his album sucks, this, that, and the other thing. And, and then the the uh, host was like, how's that? Was like, and they were going to find the whole thing was a bit, it was their way of getting his album played on the air was to make fun of it. And so if you're listening to the show, you thought they hated each other and they were making fun of it, but it was their, it was all a bit. So they played his music on the air and get it out over the air. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is radio. It's theater of the mind. I drove in as a listener thinking these guys hated each other and they were banging on his music. And it was all a bit just get it on the air. That's fantastic. Uh, that's a, a nice peek behind the behind the wall, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, we did lose another legend, uh, Little Richard. Little Richard was uh, one of the chief architects of rock and roll, whose piercing wail, uh, pounding piano, and towering pompadour irrevocably altered popular music while introducing black R&B to white America. He passed away Sunday after battling bone cancer at the age of of 87 so our hearts go out to little richard didn't he have the um the virus in him but that's not what he died from no i'm not seeing anything i i'm sure any unfortunately with anybody who passes away right now of any uh any kind of status out there this first thing people don't think um i'm not seeing anything in this from the ap about uh covid sure so you know uh Sad but anyhow, lose these three these three people. But uh, I did want to give you one more story. Um, yeah, Las Vegas uh, uh, Metropolitan Police Department ended up shooting a sword bearing man. Was it a samurai sword, a saber, uh, one of the swords used for um, <laughs> uh, fencing? Was it like a, a Highlander sword? Was it a Braveheart it was sword? Just a generic sword. But, uh, and, and uh, who knows? They, who knows what, what type it was? They're not really saying. The Las Vegas police said uh, an officer shot and killed a man with a sword after he lunged at them while police were trying to de escalate the disturbance call. Shortly after uh, 10 30 uh, this last Tuesday, they, re they replied to this, uh, re responded to this apartment complex where this uh, went down. Uh, Unfortunately, Metro does have a reputation of shooting people. Yeah, we seen seven. that. We saw that video where they're shooting a guy through his windshield. I think we're up to seven for the year right now for Las Vegas proper, then a few for uh, North Las Vegas and some for Henderson. But uh, yeah, people are getting a little wacky out there right now. And again, I think a lot of it has to do with our economy here. I mean, the Strip is nothing right now. They're not reopening yet. So there's probably 300,000 people in our valley alone. That are unemployed wow. and not getting their uh, their uh, their money yet, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. 
that's it, man. That's all I have for the news, guys. Well, thank you so much. I know uh, Katie does underwater photography along with her other work, but clearly um, being pregnant probably put a big hold on that. And uh, interestingly enough, if you go back and listen to the episode of the What's the Scuttlebutt podcast, we get in a little bit of conversation about how being a digital photographer nowadays, you have to deal with people uh, stealing your stuff off the Internet and then printing it up and selling it at art shows. So uh, go track down that episode. It's a very entertaining one. Um, hey, is it worth doing the copyright on your uh, when you go to do it in your programs on the computer? Does that hold water oh, the, at all? The metadata? Yeah. Um, it depends. I mean, Instagram is, is notorious for not really keeping that on any of the photos that they have. I mean, I think it's still worth it because, like, say a photo editor finds your image yeah. somewhere on the Internet. Chances are your met metadata will still be there. And so and they'll... There's That's the one from your camera, right? That you can set the copyright, like on my my uh, um, my Canon. It actually says copyright it, and and I've got that turned on. So it, I think it's actually buried into the file information. It don't matter. Yeah. Getty, the Getty image is going to own all your shit anyhow. So it really doesn't matter. Damn you, Getty! <laughs> actually, it's you really need to worry more about people from anyone from China. I mean, yeah. they're notorious for stealing your stuff, and then. They can sell it anywhere and you'll never know about it mm -hmm. so you know but if you do like a backwards um image search on google mm -hmm. that's usually what people use so they'll they'll go on google images and then you can click like a little photo icon that's on the search bar and you can insert your image and it'll find it everywhere that you know they can find it on the internet and it'll even show you like similar images oh really that's incredible. yeah yeah but it's incredible well, yeah, the show is running long. We're going to wrap it up. I didn't get a chance to say, I just want to say real quick for dinner, if you go to Publix, get the ribs in the bag. Damn good. It's in a bag. You just put a hole in it, put it in the uh, oven for an hour at 400 degrees. Done with the electrical. Nothing is more primal than sitting at your dinner table, digging into some ribs by hand. That's what my family did tonight with the beagle barking on his share. Can't give him bones. Um, other things on my list, I didn't get around to talk about. Someone's been stealing my mail! We, we just got, got two Mother's Day, Day cards. cards. Both, Both of them had been open and content removed with the exception of the card. Currently looking through my security footage to see if it's a perpetrator. I speculate it's somebody working in the United States the Postal Service here in Cape Coral. Uh, Both of the cards were mailed from Cape Coral and delivered in Cape Coral, and both of them were opened. And so I'm dealing with that right now. So that was on my list that we didn't get to tonight. That's right. And uh, Above Ground Pools sold out. Everybody's at home. It's getting hot, especially down here. It's snowing in New York. In Florida, it's getting hot. You can't find a above ground pool anywhere. Well, I'm sure if you go to the super expensive places, but like if you're wanting to buy one and put up yourself, then you really need to go on. And, uh, but yeah, perhaps we'll get to those next week. Katie, thank you so much for hanging out with us for a long time tonight. Um, I know you said earlier you're a very private person. Do you have any public pages you want to promote, such as the Instagram or your art page or anything like that? Yeah, um, I have, I've got my photo page. Uh, it's kind of long my old name it's uh katie dankagali.com so you are now? <laughs> it's a k-a-t-y d-a-n-c-a-g-a-l-l-i.com the easy way to do it is if you search katie underwater photographer fort myers it'll show up you really <laughs> so, didn't take that one through and registered that for seven dollars a year did you? nope <laughs> sure sure did yeah and gordon where can people find you I can be found at Aegis 1974 on Instagram, Gordon at D410 on Facebook, and Abernathy Gordon on Twitter. OG5, uh, there's some of you on the Patreon. If you haven't been to Patreon yet, go to patreon.com or go to d-410.com, click on the Patreon link, and sign up to a dollar a month. Uh, for those of you waiting on your decals, um, I got the OD green uh, vinyl in this week, so uh, that person, yours, will be in the mail here soon. Morgan Long, yours will be in the mail soon. And the person who spotted the What's the Scuttlebutt sticker planted throughout Southwest Florida and promptly posted it on the page, I got your address. Your prize will be coming in the mail here soon. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you for um, continuing to support our show. Please share it with your friends. Uh, subscribe, and please head over to YouTube.com. Look for Digital 410 and subscribe to that channel so much. We are getting close to uh, getting out of the 200s, as sad as that is. But, hey, it's a slow jaunt in this world we live in. But, anyhow, thank you guys so much, and we will see you all next week. <laughs>